Hi, I'm Cheryl, and I'm a filmmaker. Uh, nah, I'm not really a filmmaker, but I have a videotaping business with my friend Tamara, and I work at a video store, so I'm working on being a filmmaker. I met Cheryl Dunye. I feel like I'm doing a confessional right now, but yeah, that's a, that's a fact. I met Cheryl Dunye, I'm an, I met a film director, and I'm going to talk about it. So it was last semester, a crazy semester, I took a film class and I was very interested in the content. It was all about race and gender in American film, which is great topics right there, it's pretty spicy stuff. But we looked at a bunch of films that people, you know, like have seen, like, you know, Get Out, of course, The Help. And then we talked about what I like to talk about, lesser known films that should get that recognition as well. Uh, there's Gook, there's uh, Mi Familia. So one of the films that really stuck out to me was called The Watermelon Woman. And it was by this film, this black lesbian filmmaker named Cheryl Gagne. And I've never heard of her before. I've never heard of The Watermelon Woman. And to be honest, like, when I was looking through all the films that we were going to watch over the semester, I was like, oh, like, well, what's this going to be about, you know? The title or, like, the poster for the movie was clearly the Mammy stereotype. So was it a documentary about the Mammy? Was it just some kind of wor work of some angry racist person who was like, well, let me just break a film about uh, the Mammy? And I don't know, like, I had no idea what to expect. Oh, I should say, spoiler alert, in case you're gonna watch the movie. I was very, very pleasantly surprised. The film is a Dunyamentary. Um, and what I mean by that is, the film is in the style of a documentary. It's about uh, this filmmaker, an inspiring filmmaker, I guess very synonymous with who Cheryl Dunye is herself and she's making a film and the film is about this woman in like the 1950 no 1930s 1950s era of america um her name is faye richards but she's known as the watermelon woman because of the character she would play in film uh which was like the mammy stereotype kind of like how hattie mcdaniels uh, who was the first African-American woman to win an Academy Award, Academy Award. She played the Mammy, literally called the Mammy in Gone with the Wind. Um, but anyway, so that, those were the kind of roles that she would play. She would work closely with a white female director. Uh, what was her name? What was her name? What's his name? I got nothing on a name! Uh, anyway, I can't find her name, but it's uh, Martha something. Martha something. Faye and Martha, they worked very closely together and there were speculations that, were they just co-workers? No. They were friends. No. They were... Oh god, they were roommates. Not roommates, but they were lovers. That also brings another part of Faye's identity as not only a black woman in film, but a black lesbian woman in film. So, Cheryl is essentially those things as well. And she sees herself represented through Faye in history. And there's not really much history of black lesbian women in film or black lesbian women in general. And whatever it, history that we do have, it's very limited and there's not really much to say about it. And it's just kind of like they existed, but where, you know? You know, history is told by the victor and the victor has mostly been white men cis white men, cis people in general, like there's a huge like heteronormative narrative when it comes to our history uh, that's told in like schools and stuff like that. And like, I'm fortunate to receive uh, an education where I can learn about more than just the norm of history. Um, and like those classes are available, but there are a lot of people who don't have that opportunity and never will know the truth unless we talk about it. Here's the big shocker. None of it is real. Uh, Faye Richards, she created. She created Faye Richards. She created the whole story. She created everything surrounding the watermelon woman and uh, Cheryl, her character in the movie, her quest to find more information about her and make a film about her. All of that was fake. And it was just like, 
what? Like, everything I know is a lie uh, because it just seems so real. And the point of the film was not to send us all on a, a gut-wrenching journey and how Cheryl's gonna make this movie and turns out everything is a dream and it's not real, like, no. It's about how we have to make our own history sometimes. Cheryl never found herself represented in the films that she watched or in movies or in television in general. So she made a whole movie about like let's say that this was a person who existed and that this was a thing that happened and let me talk about it and she's essentially the Faye Richards of our time because she's a black lesbian filmmaker who made a really good film um, and it also touches on interracial relationships like in the movie Cheryl it dates this white girl named Diana and there was this question about if she likes if Diana likes Cheryl for Cheryl or does she just have a fetish for black people, which is a thing. Um, a lot of black um, men, for example, uh, are fetishized by white women, and <laughs> hardly the opposite happens because it's hard out here for us black women. Point being, uh, Cheryl Dunye really carved a way for herself and for other black lesbian filmmakers and just lesbian filmmakers in general. Like, there's this one scene in The Watermelon Woman that's super, super spicy. Like, the movie was some pretty good stuff and pretty good content. So anyway, getting into how I met Cheryl Dunye, I went to an event at my school, my college campus, and Cheryl Dunye spoke and she showed uh, footage from her latest works. Um, it's called Black is Blue. It's on Vimeo if you want to watch it. Well, it's a short film, but it's about a, centered on a trans transgender man who is kind of just navigating life with his new identity, uh, had a girlfriend, a past relationship, and now she's all jaded because he transitioned when they were together. So now she like she knew him as his past identity, but he doesn't identify that as that anymore so it's kind of like that's like the the main like antagonizing force in the film um but it's it's really good it was just a short film but now it's being turned into like a major motion picture from my understanding and there's going to be some pretty big stars in there i don't want to drop any names yet but because it's like a i feel like it's like a low-key thing i feel like it's we got like an insider scoop on like what's going on in cheryl's life which was pretty pretty freaking cool and yes, I did get to talk to her for like a hot second and I name dropped and I emailed her and I'm still waiting for a response, but it's okay. I still love you, Cheryl. Like that's really inspiring how she created her own narrative out of like nothing, you know? And she didn't see herself in history, so she made history. So the point of the video is to make your own history, guys. Like if you don't see yourself represented, you could be that voice. You could be the first, you know? And I might not be the first to talk about the things that I want to talk about, but I definitely want to contribute, and I hope that I'm doing so in some capacity. So yeah, that's my spiel today, y'all. More videos to come. See ya, y'all.